As a developer, I am obsessed with ChatGPT. I'm able to write code so much faster. So here's a list of five specific ways that I've used ChatGPT to take my coding projects to the next level in the last couple of weeks. What's up everyone, my name is James Q. Quick and I do weekly videos on web development related topics. And as you probably noticed, ChatGPT has taken the world by storm, especially us as developers. And so I've been using this more and more basically every day for the past couple of weeks. I've even paid for the updated uh, subscription model or whatever to try out GPT-4. Maybe I'll do a video on that if you wanna know more about what GPT-4 is like, but ChatGPT has been absolutely incredible. So I'm gonna walk through five specific ways that I've used ChatGPT in a couple of recent projects that I've been working on. One is the Learn, Build, Teach Discord bot. So Learn, Build, Teach is the Discord community that I run. You can find it at learnbuildteach.com if you're interested in joining an amazing community. But I've been working on adding a few different features to the bot, so I've been using ChatGPT to help augment that workflow. Now, I've also been working on a pretty neat project called JQQ Memes, where I take freeze frame images that are really awkward of me and YouTube videos, and I let you create memes. So there's actually a link to that in the description below. It's kind of in a beta, but it's out there if you wanna try it out. I love to see what memes you come up with. So make sure to tag me on Twitter if you do that. But those are two projects that I've been using ChatGPT in recently. So we're gonna go ahead and walk through the five specific ways that I've done this that helps like take my coding to the next, like absolute next level. Really quickly, before we do that though, let me know if you have any cool use cases for ChatGPT in your code in the comments below. I'd love to hear how you're using it yourself. So. That said, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so the first example is with the Learn, Build, Teach Discord. And I actually use this in a couple of different ways, but here's the context. I wanted to have discussion questions that we could have conversations about on a weekly basis inside of Discord, but I didn't necessarily trust myself to go and create a question each week and then remember to post it on time. So I figured why not incorporate this to post automatically using the Learn, Build, Teach Discord bot. But the big question was, where do I field all of these questions from? I could type them out all myself. I could ask people in the community for questions, but I figured I would ask ChatGPT first. So I said, hey, can you generate, in this case, 10 questions, but originally I did 50, 10 questions relevant to these topics, getting started, imposter syndrome, favorite tools, et cetera. And it turned out that they were spot on questions that I could just throw right into Discord, which is really great. Now, the only problem was I wanted to copy and paste these into an array in JavaScript. So instead of doing that myself, I asked ChatGPT, hey, just convert this to an array in JavaScript. Then I could truly copy and paste that output into my code. So I even created a seed function now inside of my code to take all of those questions and then save them into the database, which is Superbase. And now in our bot, we can kick off a cron job that calls a function to go and query a random question ask that question, post it in the Discord on a weekly basis, and then mark that question as already asked. That way we don't ask the same question again. So ChatGPT was able to generate questions for me, convert those to an array that I could copy into my code, and then, don't take this personally, but Discord JS, the library that I use to interact with Discord for the bot, documentation is really bad. So I actually struggled to find the snippet where I could actually create a message in a forum channel, which is what this is going into. So ChatGPT even gave me the solution of how to post that question. So ChatGPT helped me add this feature of automatically posting a relevant question to our Discord every week. Now, one of the things I was missing to make all that functionality work was a cron job to actually kick all this off. Now, cron syntax is a special syntax to say the least to be able to schedule things on a regular basis, once a week, twice a week, every Thursday at 6 p.m., et cetera. So I needed to generate a cron string that I can use inside of my JavaScript code so that it could trigger this function to post this question on the weekly basis. I don't know cron syntax. It's not really that hard. I just don't use it very often, so I'm not used to it. So I figured, hey, ChatGPT, can you generate a cron syntax to do something every Monday at 10 a.m.? Gave it that question. Not only did it generate the cron string, but it also then generated code for incorporating the cron package in Node and then actually like showing you how to use it, which is really, really neat. Now, what's funny about this is on stream, I had uh, asked how to do this and I actually used the wrong word in my question. So I asked ChatGPT, how do you do something on a regular basis using regex? Just because that was something that came to mind and it was wrong. So ChatGPT said, I'm sorry, I don't think you understand regexes because they're not used to do that. Take a look because I typed in regex. That's not, that's not what I meant. ChatGPT is 100% right. <laughs> I did mean cron. 
Chat GPT, I'm, I've been saying regex this whole time. Whole time. Chat GPT is not only smart enough to answer questions, it's also intelligent enough to tell you when you're an idiot. <laughs> well, Chat GPT was actually absolutely right. So I went back and said, sorry, I actually meant cron job. And then it was able to go and generate all the code from there. So not only was it able to give me the correct answer when I asked correctly, it was also able to correct me and tell me that I didn't know what I was talking about because I was absolutely wrong and then go on to give me the correct answer after then correcting. So ChatGPT is my teacher. It is my instructor. And I look to ChatGPT for everything now. Now, number two is similar where I was struggling with the lack of documentation or lack of discoverability with the Discord JS SDK for working with Discord bots and JavaScript. And so I went to ChatGPT to try to find out how do I get the total members of my Discord so that we could display it on the website, have a command to like return that number or something like that. But how do I do that? And so ChatGPT went through this whole thing of like, here's how you set up a Discord bot. Here's how you handle an incoming message. Here's how you check what kind of message that is. And basically use that as a command to then return back the here's how many uh, members we have in this Discord. And so that worked really well, but I didn't necessarily want this to be based off of an actual uh, event. I wanted this to be just something I could load myself. So ChatGPT goes back again with context of what it had already done, updates the code to add that logic inside of the client dot on ready. So after the client is ready for Discord, it was able to generate that stuff for me, which is perfect. Now it did reference a couple of private variables, the server ID and the token for the bot. I guess the server ID isn't, pro isn't private, but it is something that makes sense in environment variables. So I asked ChatGPT, hey, can you go back and update this code one more time and use environment variables? And it proceeded to give me instructions of how to set up environment variables with the .env package, how to reference them, all that stuff, absolutely nailed it spot on. Now, the next way that I used ChatGPT was with the JQQ memes project. Now, the tech stack for this is Next.js, which is one of my favorite frameworks. We're using Cloudinary to take text and overlay it onto images. And then we're using AppWrite for the back end for authentication, for saving references to the images and other things long term. So I wanted to keep track of the state of the logged in user across our different pages, uh, across our different across our different pages in our application. Now with this, you have to have some sort of like shared state. So the, I guess the easiest or like most standard way is to go and just use the context API in React. And I kind of use quotes when I say the easiest because it's always super tricky to me how to create context from scratch in React. I always forget, I always have to look it up. So I figured chat GPT, can you do this for me? So I asked it, can you create a context for me that'll keep track of the logged in user, an error state, an is loading property, and then can we also expose uh, log in, log out, and sign up functions. And it stubbed all of this stuff out beautifully to the point where I could just drop it in. Now, not only that, but I took it to the next level. And I said, hey, ChatGPT, based on that code that you just created, I'm going to be using AppWrite for authentication for this process. Can you just alter the login, the logout, and the sign up functions to use the AppWrite SDK? And it absolutely nailed it by generating all the code to handle all those three pieces of functionality with AppWrite inside of Next.js. And then it even showed me how to reference this uh, context, the use user hook in different parts of the application. So all the code that I needed to track the user across the different pages and the state of the user, all done for me with ChatGPT with just a few lines of text from me. Now this last one is pretty cool because it helps solve one of the problems that developers struggle with most, writing documentation. So I was on a stream and I was lacking a readme for a project and I figured, why don't I just have ChatGPT generate a readme for me? So for this JQQ memes project, I gave it the link to the GitHub repo. I said, hey, can you generate a readme for me in the format of Markdown? It went through, looked at the code, explained the technologies that were in there, including Next.js, Cloudinary, AppWrite, et cetera. It referenced the environment variables to tell people how to set it up on their own machine, told them how to run it, uh, said, uh, here's what to do if you want to contribute, create a PR, et cetera, and then gave me a license at the bottom too. Now, this sort of stuff is kind of trivial, but like writing documentation is, is one challenging and it's also just something I'm not very excited about, but it is a necessary thing. So to have ChatGPT come in and actually document this project for me, that's a pretty sweet game changer. So those are five ways that I've used ChatGPT recently in like the last week on coding projects that I'm currently working on. I'm curious, what sort of ways have you been using ChatGPT in your coding journey? Let me know in the comments below. And if you have any questions about AI or ChatGPT or anything like that that you'd like to see incorporated into code on this channel, let me know that in addition on the comments in the comments below. Thanks as always for checking out the video and I'll catch you next time.